everybody. Welcome to Treasure Time. Today, we're going to have a story about a hermit crab. And I have my little friend hermit crab right here. And a hermit crab is different from all other crabs, like this crab, who has his own shell, or this crab, because a hermit crab doesn't have his own shell. He has to live in somebody else's shell. And he comes right out and he crawls around and he finds himself a shell to live in. And this is a very tiny shell, but if you go down to the beach, you'll maybe find some little hermit crabs in shells, just like this. And then when that shell gets too big, they might move into another shell and another shell. And maybe even a bigger shell like that when they get bigger. And hermit crabs change their shells. And this story is about a hermit crab who found himself a very fancy shell. And it's kind of a fun story. The Hermit Crab by Carter Goodrich. The Hermit Crab in this story didn't set out to be a hero, and he wasn't particularly brave. He was actually very shy. Whenever all his neighbors would get together, the hermit crab was happy to linger just out of sight. If anyone didn't, did happen to notice him, he would become terribly nervous and start to fidget. And then, if they should happen to say something like, hi, or how's it going, he would disappear deep into a shell without saying a word. Do you know anyone who's shy? Or sometimes, do you feel a little shy when you meet new people? Early one morning, just when the hermit crab's neighbors were sitting down to have breakfast, a large wooden contraption fell out of the sky and headed right for them. It bounced and clattered and finally came to rest smack in the middle of their town square. The hermit crab was off by himself, poking around in the sand, looking for something good to eat. There he is. What in the world is it? The starfish asked. Some sort of new restaurant, the lobster replied. He was sniffing at the tasty aroma that was coming from inside it. Stay back, the bluefish warned. I've seen things like this before. It smells like there's something good to eat inside, but don't be fooled. It's just a trap. Hey, said the striped bass, where's the flounder? Has anyone seen the flounder? Nobody had. Meanwhile, not far away, the hermit crab had forgotten all about looking for food. He was sitting perfectly still on top of a rock, looking down at the most beautiful shell he had ever seen. 
very carefully, the hermit crab crept over to the fancy new shell, saw that it was empty, and decided right then and there to move in. It even has moving parts, he thought to himself. He felt very happy. But back in the center of town, no one was happy. Help, cried a voice from beneath the contraption. It's the flounder, the lobster yelled. He's trapped underneath the restaurant. It's not a restaurant, said the bluefish. It's a trap. The flounder needs our help. Yeah, the crabs shouted. The flounder needs our help. Okay, okay, the lobster said. Go ahead. But if that thing is some kind of trap, I'm not going near it. And then nobody said anything because they all felt the same way. Wait a minute, the striped bass whispered. Who is that? The hermit crab came stumbling out of the seaweed forest right into the center of town. What is this, he thought. He didn't notice the flounder, but he did notice the good smells. And that reminded him how hungry he was. He walked around the contraption, grabbing it and giving it a shake. He wanted to get in to where that good smell was coming from. Everyone watched the mysterious stranger from their hiding places. Look, whispered the starfish, he's trying to rescue the flounder. Who is that? Yeah, the crab shouted, who is that? That, cried the lobster, that is our brave champion, our hero, come to save us. And then, all of a sudden, the contraption moved. Then it moved again. And finally, it began to float back into the sky. The hermit crab was still clinging to its side. He had let go at last and gently drifted back down and settled right on top of the flounder. The flounder, now free, tried to thank the mysterious stranger, but the hermit crab drew himself up into his new shell. Everyone came rushing out of their hiding places, cheering their hero. This excitement was just too much for the poor hermit crab. He curled up even tighter inside his new shell. Great, he thought. Now I'll never get anything to eat. The hermit crab's neighbors quickly organized a parade and carried their hero to the highland, the highest rock, where they carefully set him down for all to see. Then they celebrated into the night the hermit crab remained hidden from view. As soon as it grew quiet, the hermit crab slid out of the fancy new shell. He tiptoed past his snoring neighbors back through the seaweed forest until at last he found his worn out old shell right where he'd left it. He wriggled back inside and soon fell fast asleep. 
The next day, the hermit crab made his way back to town. There, still perched on top of the highest rock, was the fancy new shell, empty as the day he'd found it. But nobody in the crowd noticed. They were happy to cheer their new hero while the lobster made speech after speech. So the hermit crab settled in just beyond the edge of the crowd, right where he was most comfortable. He smiled to himself and even cheered the fancy new shell, but he cheered very softly and just a little bit. He didn't want to be noticed. Do you feel shy sometimes? Being shy is something that I think we've all felt, felt every now or then. Some people like to be with people and some people like to be quiet and like to be by themselves. And now I'm going to sing a song for you, which is about this book. And you see if you can remember the parts of it. some little hermit crabs crawling around in little tiny snail shells like this. And you'll see your little friend, the hermit crab, down at the beach. And perhaps you'll remember this story. And I hope that you all are having a good summer and getting ready for school. And the hermit crab is too. And have a happy day. <laughs>